without the FX Luminaire controller and transformer and um, how it might differ from a traditional transformer. Perfect. All right. So traditional transformer and transformers don't transform anything. All they are is a power reducer from 230 to 40 down to a 15 volt output. All right. So on the inside of it, we actually have the controller. The transformer is up in here. Um, the chassis and all of the good fun stuff is in there. And then we've got dual um, common and 15 volt outputs. So that's where you would wire your low voltage cable into. Yeah. On the face pack here, we've got behind it, we've got an F, uh, a Wi-Fi. So you can have hook this to a Wi-Fi antenna. We've got a LAN connection, so you can directly hardwire it to your router. And then there's a DMX, which will, uh, it's for future use. So we're coming up with that. Okay, when oh, I- so that's, that's a bit hush hush. That's a little bit hush hush. DMX and the wrapper. Stay, stay tuned, yes. <laughs> stay tuned. Um, on the outside face, now normally what happens, there is a door and it closes, that way it becomes waterproof and safe. So you can just here. The hinges there, there closes there. up, yep. lockable, all that good fun stuff. Three very simple buttons. Home is you go home to there. If I want to come down, I can, I've got a scroll wheel, so I can scroll around to anything I want. Once I get to my desired part there, I push it and now it moves into my next file or my next screen as we go into it. If you've gone too far, you can simply go back. Okay. Uh, we've got on the front here, we've got two programming ports. So we're going to talk about our fixtures shortly, but we've got uh, our fixtures are smart. So we can actually go and group our fixtures. We can do it A, wirelessly, or B, we can simply take the leads, the wires from the fixture. We can insert them into here, and then we can select and uh, we can have groups one through 250. And there's not a polarity of these. No, there so is not. No, got, there's two cables. It doesn't matter which one goes. Through. Correct. Both there and when you hook them into there, it's not a DC system. It's an AC, uh, alternating current in, alternating current out, and so it does not matter if you go and have 15 common or common yep. neutral. So the lights uh, are able to be told where who they are or where they are in the system. Yes, they are. And you can either do that by plugging them in here and programming them, yep. or doing it out on in the field once they've been installed, yes. but you'd use a separate device for You'd use a separate device, and you will, uh, FYI, you will also need Wi-Fi conductivity to where that fixture is in the landscape. Okay. Very important. If you do not have it, your little machine will not work. Makes sense. Okay. Um, and so what can this controller do? So it's, a, it's on off, obviously. Yes. Um, and then you can set programs. Right. So in this controller itself, um, it is it has an astronomical timer, so you can set your program times to come on at sunset. You can have it turn off at sunrise. You can have a calendar base where you can turn it on um, to follow the seasons. You can go and change your programs from say a normal evening to a late evening. It's got all of that capability in it. Um, so we can do everything from turning on an individual group. Say I want to go out and check to see if my lights are working. I can roll it around and, and initiate group number seven turn it on, inspect it, check it, have it come on for a duration of time, and then it will time out. I can have it with scenes or what we call themes. Your themes, you're going to have a collection of groups set into a program, um, a romantic evening, a party like a rock star, a, all of those good fun things. You can actually go and turn that scene on. It can all be done from here. And if you have purchased this as a hard uh, controller, uh, could you get access to an app that you can use then to program the, the control? Absolutely. So here it's a little bit almost like what I would call long division. So it takes a little while. You've got to roll the scroll wheel around, push a button, roll the scroll wheel, push another button and do it that way. Or we can actually have it working through a remote control, which looks very much like my iPhone because that's what it is. Um, and then how these two connect um, is via Wi-Fi. And we're not showing the Wi-Fi antenna on the bottom of it, but there's a Wi-Fi antenna attached to it. And now wirelessly, the two will communicate through an app. So on a site, if you didn't have Wi-Fi, could you still have this? Absolutely. You yes. just can't program it from your phone or make adjustments from anywhere in the world. Correct. Yep. Um, now you can, you, if you chose not to, if you go, oh, I don't have Wi-Fi, don't need, you can do everything in here. You can save it. If the Wi-Fi goes down, it will still turn on at sunset. So it can be both done from the app and it can be done from the controller. Okay. Perfect. It's just more cumbersome. Absolutely, a lot slower. Yes, absolutely. 
So what most people will do is once they purchase it, the magic is when you go and hit your remote control, your app, you go and download the app, and then you've got the choice of the different tiles that come with it. And so you can assign the groups as we spoke about earlier. So we can actually wirelessly come through and assign groups to the fixtures. And what I mean by that is each fixture is capable of being a group. And those groups, once you assign them for the rest of its life, you can have that fixture be group 1, 27, 223. Once you assign it, you could take it from Adelaide to Melbourne, Melbourne to Auckland, New Zealand, New Zealand up to the US, and it will retain that memory in there, whether it's got electricity to it or not. So it becomes part of like a, a phone, it becomes part of its chipset. And it's yes, absolutely, great, great. And then from there, we actually have groups. So you can have groups through one through 250. And, we, and if you have purchased the fixture with the dimming capability, you can change your intensity in 1% increments from one to 100 and back again. Um, if you've also upgraded to color, then you can also go and choose one of 30,000 colors if you choose and to. And those colors are those, the numbers, the five digit, so 2700 or? 2700 degrees and uh, we'll go, so speaking of color, we've got in here and so I'll actually, we have color in here and so what you could do is you can go and save some colors in here. Um, if it's your favorite football team, your favorite cricket team, it's your whatever that is. Yep. Um, if you do not like the color, we can actually go through and we can do and just tap on there. And we've got a color picker, which you can actually change your hue and saturation, or we can simply come through and go and change it. If I want green, we can come through there. We can change it from green to some form of red and we can save those colors. So now, if you have a corporate identity that, and you know this, is whatever it is, the CMK, what is it called? CMYK. CMYK, the yep. number. Yes. You can plug that into it. Absolutely. And it will give you yep. the general So it will give you, and it will give you the general color. Yes. Okay, so from there, um, back to our home screen. So we've got the assignment, which we showed you, the groups that we showed you, the colors. So once you figure out those colors, whatever group, as long as you've got the um, the fixture to go and have the color board in it, then you can choose that color. We've got controllers just to go and show that we're communicating. If we have multiple controllers, they will have multiple um, information of which ones are working or heaven forbid if one is not, if you lose Wi-Fi, things like that. Next thing we have is we have themes and themes are probably more commonly known as scenes. And so your scenes might be normal evening, late evening, security, romance, all of those things, those scenes that you can create. And we do that by taking the groups, we change the intensity, and we go and change the hue and the saturation or the color if needed. How many scenes can you have? Uh, 26. Well, actually there's a few more than that, but I know definitely 26, because we... It's like the first time you've sounded like a Kiwi when you said 26. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With an American accent, yeah. very, very confusing. In Australia. It, yeah, exactly. Um, so 250, groups yes and they can have how many lights in a group um they could have they could have as many like a, lot. a lot is so this one happens to be a 300 watt control you wouldn't be able to handle the number of lights the trip the, tri the controller could only it can do the number of wattage sort of or, or yeah. volt amps that is consumed on the system so you're never going to cap max that you're never going to max out your number of uh lights per haven't haven't maxed it out yet you can't well, you really can't you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the voltage to handle that that is correct yeah, cool. yep awesome Okay, so the, someone wants to um, install this, they get their app, they've got access to programming, color change, dimming, yep. on and off. Yes. And then where does it go from there? Okay, so from here we can go and both do this on the side. So we're at your home, yep. um, we've got this and it's speaking to the Wi-Fi. And then through the Wi-Fi, your phone or at home, you're hooked up to your Wi-Fi in your house. So these two can communicate. Um, you can also go and have the option of working through AWS, Amazon Web Services, and become cloud-based. So now if you're traveling interstate, whatever that thing is, you've still got control over your lighting, but via cloud, which is kind of a nice deal. Can a contractor have control over a client's lighting and yeah. give them, I guess, parental and child access to the to change their lights? Absolutely. Fix the problems? Yes. So so we've got contractors that will say, hey, they have a maintenance route. Mm -hmm. So as part of their program, they, they maintain the property, both irrigation. We do it very easily through HydroWise. Yeah. We also go and do it through this if they chose to. So then you've got a basically a master and you choose who that master is going to be. Could be the homeowner and then your contractor has got access as a guest 
so to speak, or you can flip it around the other way. Some yeah. property owners go, I don't want to touch it, you just take care of it for me, and we can do it that way. Or a parent could give their actual child access to be able to turn lights on and off, yes. but not make changes to colors. And right, and we can restrict some scenes, and we can do some things like that for parental type controls. Do the uh, lights at the moment have any uh, backwards communication back to the controller? If Not yet. Errors? No, no. no. so uh, it's, everything is forward. So yeah. what we do is we send voltage down the line. Yeah. We start off at 15 and for a color, we want a minimum of 11. If we're doing just white lights, we can go down to 10. Yeah. So we can allow four or five volts down the line, but it is always one way communication today. And we're always working on things. And so we're actually talking about some two way for advances in the future. Perfect. So once you've got this installed and um, you, you, that's, I guess, the brains of it. Yes. Um, talk to me about the cable uh, and, and I guess the, obviously the advantages of it being a single cable system and right. then what happens next. Okay, so the nice part is we, we put 15 volts down the line, but we also overlay a signal in there. And that signal communicates from the controller or from your app to your controller, controller to the fixtures. And those fixtures that are being grouped you now can go and turn on whichever fix you want at whatever intensity you so desire and for whatever duration you want as Provided well. Provided you purchase the fixture that's got the capability to have that is correct. those features. That is correct. Great point. So, so we do sell fixtures, which we're going to call dumb for this purposes of our conversation, where they, when you turn it on, they will just turn on. We've got other ones that have smart technology in there. And if you get, depending on what level, a good, better, best solution, um, you can have them just with an on off, but groupable. We can have on off and dimming capable. We can have on off dimming and color capable, depending on budget, depending on your needs and your wants. Okay. So we've got a few different fixtures here and obviously some strip lighting. Yep. Um, are we able to turn them on? Absolutely. Show you what so can do. so let's, let's go to the first one. So the first one here, um, just going into my app, went into groups, and we would simply take my slide switch and boom, we've turned on a light. So we've turned on a fixture. So that's group one. <clears throat> and that happens to be group one, yep. which we've chosen in here. And that's what we assigned it to on the controller. And we could name this wall light, we, path light, absolutely. driveway, whatever yes. suits the yep. household. Yep. yep. We can go through and we can change the intensity. We can turn it all the way down. And what will happen is that fixture just turns down. So it's, it's pretty close to real time. Oh, pretty close to real, absolutely. Oh, Slight delay, but that's getting through Wi-Fi yep. and things like that. Or conversely, we can actually turn it all the way up and you'll see that fixture or turn up. The second thing, this isn't just in a warm white, this is 2700 degrees ish Kelvin temperature, just a nice warm white, does beautiful lighting on surfaces that are in the brown tones. But if I had it somewhere differently, I could literally come through and take my color picker and I could say, hey, today I want it in a red, okay? And then it will convert it will change to there. If I don't like that hue of red, I can go back into my color as we discussed earlier, and I can change the hue and saturation and use my color to pick it. But what I've done here earlier is I've gone and saved this red into here. And again, if I don't like the red, I can go through and I can change it to a purple as an example. I can't imagine too many people would not go with the color option after seeing it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Obviously, there is a price point yeah. in there. So, so um, there's a, we can go and have, say, just one fixture in the yard. Maybe it's a water feature. Maybe it's a piece of statuary. Yeah. Maybe it's a focal point that you want to have it. The controller doesn't care if it's color or not. But uh, think about your home. you got, say, there's that one thing. I'm like, white light, white light, white light. Except, hey, I've got that one, and that would just be gorgeous in... Whatever. purple or whatever color you so desired okay so that's one and this happens to be a wall light gets it inset into a wall and comes down um works very very well so a landscaper might put that on a retaining wall or a, or a, or a path or a, sorry on a staircase yes lighting up all of those good uh, wing walls on a staircase all of those good fun things yep and then obviously you've got some other okay other lights yes got a couple of other ones and so we're going to go to group two and group two i've got it set at a hanging light a down light fixture so think about some of your trees, your plant material, um, maybe in an arbor, things like that. Uh, we go through and it's got exactly the same characteristics as the light that we looked at previously. It's just a hanging fixture. A little note on this one here, we've actually got these decorative fins in here. Um, because of our integrated fixtures here, we like to fix take, we like to keep the LEDs cool. And how you do that is you have it integrated into the fixture, it's attached to it, and we use the fins as a cooling device. And what we actually do is increase the surface area of the fixture. Is this changing color? 
Uh, yes, and actually what I've done on this one, I've held it as Might a purple. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we've done is we actually had, with its cable, say you're entertaining out there, you can quietly and you can change the rotation speed, but it will go through all the colors in the rainbow and then back to the star and away you so go. So this could heavily reduce the, the labor around Christmas lights. Absolutely, yes, or if you entertain a lot, yeah. um, so you could do that kind of thing, absolutely. And so for vineyards or wedding function centers, Perfect. you could change the color of or the intensity of a light for a mood for a photographer yes. or even um, for a, a bridesmaid dress matching or perfect. whatever. Yep. Perfect. Teal, pink, whatever that color is. Absolutely. Wow. All right. So that's just Starting a hanging. To, uh, yep. Quick little hanging hanging. fixture there. I'm no armor. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Warwash got a different, slightly different fixture here. And it's this guy here, and I'm not going to put it directly at the camera here, but uh, again, it's a fixture here. Um, and just imagine the light that comes out of it. And with the wall wash, you want to have a very broad spread of light. So at least 60 degrees of beam spread. So think about walls, hedges. If I had some bush roses going on there, garage doors, if they're pretty, um, you can do a very wide beam spread of light. And we've got a fixture that will specifically do that. I've also got that just rolling through with our color wheel, um, just for just for camera purposes. And are, the, are those angles adjustable? Like, could you, you if you've got a 60 degree, yes. you could put in a different lens? Absolutely. So uh, what we have in here, we've got some beam optic angles and we simply go and remove the reflector and we pop in a different one. It will take it from a very wide to a wide flood. And is that pretty easy for a it's handy, handy, very, it's, it's handy. Yeah. It, it is literally taking the cover off, no tools required, pop the lens off, pop a new one in there. 30 seconds later, I've got a different beam spray. And the uh, weatherproof nature of the fitting doesn't get impacted by taking it apart? Putting no, it does not. No, no, we've got double O-ring technology. We, we spend a lot of time. Again, remember back to our LEDs, they do not like two things. They do not like heat. Yep. That's why we have the cooling fins on it. And they also do not like moisture. So electronics don't like getting wet. So we take a lot of time and effort to make sure our, our they're either waterproof or at least water resistant. Yep. Perfect. And I'm noticing there's a few different finishes. Obviously, yep. these are new to the Australian market. Yes. Um, obviously, if this video goes out, when are we in now? You know, February 2023, there'll be a base range yes. available yep. in the initial stages. And then... Right. Initially, that'll be in a flat black finish. Um, don't, this, this is an orange just for a demonstration purposes light. That way, people such as yourself don't steal my lights because I, I know where to go back and find them. Okay, so that's that's only for demonstration purpose. But you would find that the whole fixture would be in black, and that's what we're currently going to stock yep. at your premises. So just steal this one. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you got it. And again, so so we went from there, and then we're gonna come through and do a group five here. I've just grouped it as group five, and then this fixture here, come in here. Now we make sure that we have shrouds because part of our mantra is we want to see the effect of light, not the source of the light. So if you're coming through and if you're looking directly into the light, it's uncomfortable. If we have shrouds on them, eyebrows, it means that you can see the effect of the light, what it's shining on, but not be looking down the throat of the fixture. Very important to us. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly, I've got it down here and I've grouped it. I will find it for you. I'm excited about this one. Nice. So we've just, we've just come into the world of strip light or under cap lights. So think about under the barbecue, uh, under benches, um, they've become a myriad of floating steps, yep. things like that. Uh, we have got... We're seeing a lot of that now, um, yeah, burnished concrete steps where there'll be lighting underneath. Yep, and what we can do, again, it's the same thing. As long as you incorporate, if you do not use it, so, so the, the strip is not smart, but we've got basically little relays, and the little relays allow it to be grouped and to be able to be the intensity to be changed. So we can make it brighter but there's not a color change yet no we have actually got color changing stuff but it's but it's very new to the market and uh, next time i come by and hang out with you yep. um i'll come in and i'll go and show you and the color stuff will do exactly the same as what the colored fixtures will do in strip lighting in strip lighting and that's just next level but so stay tuned uh with strip lighting traditional strip lighting we're able to cut it and shorten it yes can you do that with this? absolutely and within um 20 millimeters, there's actually little cut marks on there, so you can actually go and cut it to length. It will come standard in Imperial, um, there's 10 or 40 foot, so that's, what's that? That's three meter or 12 meter lengths approximately, and uh, so you can go, but you can cut it every, every three centimeters as an example. 
the piece that you cut off, could you use it? You could do because we sell them with couplings, <laughs> and uh, so you can go and make come up, make a ninety degree, do a oh, coupling wow. in a corner. So if, if I cut this off, there's a I can put a, an end piece over it, and that it can, keeps it. Working. Yes, yeah, yeah and it keeps it working. So we have end caps for them, but you can come through. And I, if we were if we were to uh, put lighting around the perimeter of this desk here, I can come in. I can put a ninety. I can come in and put another coupling in, so we can change Is the ninety lit. The lighty is not lit, lit but so it, it will be light up to the ninety, and then well, yeah. op optically because it's so small, it's within it's within uh, three centimeters, right. and uh, so you actually don't see light, dark light again. It's just this very even lighting effect. And the, the flexibility of this kind of turns on a you know what is yes. that fifteen centimeter diameter. It's actually it, pretty good in that respect. Tight. It will not bend sideways. It doesn't go the other way. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go it that way. way. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah. So so I've had you know it's, it's amazing with this. Um, I've even had people with pots where they've had plant material in pots where they were going to put it around the inside diameter of said pot, mm -hmm. and so they can illuminate in there. There's a number we, of different. And it's waterproof. And it's waterproof. Yeah. Is, it, is this submersible? No, not yet. No, no. no. We, are, we do not. Um, I've had different people say, like, hey, can I put it around the perimeter of my swimming pool? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. So weather proof. What is it? Weather proof. 67, 67 or something? Or? IP67. It's, yeah. it's one of those numbers yeah. in there. Yes. Water resistant, not waterproof. Yeah, don't submerse Correct. your lights. Yes. Well, that's amazing. Um, so these are obviously now available in Australia. Yeah. Um, at obviously waterpro.com.au but then other irrigation resellers across the country yes um if anyone's got any questions about this check out fxl.com go uh, and that's the, the greatest resource to look for yep. and then as you go through and you can either go and look under product design all the different services that we have teaching training all of that stuff um and we've always got just new and cool information that comes out um, and so that's a perfect place to go looking right well thank you so much for that i'm sure that will help some of the uh, landscape community in south australia and across the rest of the country um and yeah hopefully we'll see some of these fixtures at my house real soon awesome thank you again for your time